Hello, this is uh, James Turk. I'm the founder and chairman of Gold Money. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to be here with good old friend Hugo Salinas Price of Mexico. People have probably read his articles on the internet and are familiar with the Libertad coin program in Mexico. And that's what I'd like to talk about today. Hugo, thank you thank very you. much. I'm very pleased to be here with you. Jim. Let's talk a little bit about the, the Libertad program. I know this is something that's been near and dear to you for many, many years. And well, it's introducing a silver coin into Mexico. Can you tell us a little bit about the background? You know, why you, first of all, this, why did you want to do this? Well, really what, what set me on the path of, uh, of silver was the crisis we had in Mexico in 1994, uh, December of 94 and January of 95. And when I said to myself, well, this really is just too much. What the heck is going on here? What, why do we have these recurrent crises? Where, where, and, and I got, uh, devoted myself to thinking and thinking and thinking about what, what is really going on in our world. And I came to the conclusion that it's all because what, of funny money that we use, it, this paper money. It just doesn't work. And... And that was what uh, guided me into silver, because silver has been Mexico's uh, money for centuries. The first silver money was coined in Mexico in 1535. And when my father was born in 1907, we had essentially the same coin circulating in Mexico. It was didn't look the same, but it it had different figures on it, but it was this of ex essentially the same weight and purity of silver that it had almost 400 years earlier. That's a remarkable record. So Mexico is really the country of silver. It's produced a gigantic amount of silver and still does. Was that the Mexic, uh, the Spanish mill dollar? Was that the coin? That was the, what they called it, the pieces of eight. Yeah. And so there were eight, eight parts to it, and they called them in the United States, they called them bits. Bits because there were eight bits to eight parts of, of, of a Spanish dollar. Right. Uh, it was eight reales, uh, eight, eight reals. Yeah. So two bits was a quarter. That's why I still, uh, it used to be uh, not too long ago, you used to say, what does it cost? It costs two bits. And people knew what you were saying. I remember that as a young yeah. boy as well. Yeah. Two bits was a quarter. And there's the old saying, two bits, four bits, six, uh, eight bits a dollar. And then you know, it went on as a you know, child uh -huh. saying. Uh -huh. um, but the real was um, uh, the basis, and then the eight real was the, the, the Spanish mill dollar. That's right. Uh, the eight, eight reales was the... This is what you call the Spanish mill dollar, which was the basis for the American dollar, as a matter yeah. of fact. And so getting back to those fundamentals, I, I said, well, we really should go back to silver. And I wrote a book on that. Of course, it's very ideal. My first thoughts were very idealistic. And uh, I realized soon after that that idealism wasn't wasn't going to get very far in this practical world and we had to have uh, we had to have something simpler and a first step uh, a first step to towards silver and and uh, so i came around to the idea that somehow we had to put silver back into circulation along with paper money why had it gone out of circulation it went out of circulation because it had an engraved value so I decided, well, I thought if we didn't have an engraved value on the coin but simply had an official quote what, that give it a monetary value, that would uh, solve the problem of uh, the currency going out of circulation from time to time, you know, because uh, there was a period there we had one silver coin we had for 25 years, and then Inflation took hold in Mexico, and we could only keep a, a silver coin in circulation three, five years. Mm -hmm. And then it, 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 the silver price would 
would push it out of circulation because it was worth more melted down than as money. So and when, when you're, you're talking about the engraved value, you're talking about uh, so many pesos yeah, that so the many, government mint puts on the face, face value of that coin. But right. the reality was that the silver content at its market value is worth more than the face value of exactly. that coin itself. Exactly. You're saying exactly the, the right thing. That's exactly That's what happened. That's similar to what happened in the U.S. as well in yeah. the 1960s when all the of the silver coins went up. The same thing happened in the United States. And so part of the solution was don't engrave a fixed value on the coin. And then... Engrave the weight on the coin? So just the weight, yes. So everybody it's knows important. it's one ounce that's or why one gram or whatever. We're, that's why we work with one ounce because that you can't... You see, you can always def redefine a dollar or you can always redefine a peso. You can, by redefining, I mean you can attribute, a, say it's worth a less amount of gold or less amount of silver. That's what I call redefining it. Mm -hmm. But an ounce is an but ounce. But an ounce is an ounce. Yeah. Once it's, you say this is an ounce, that's got, that, you can't redefine an ounce. But that's the whole key of sound money. It's just like, you know, an ounce is important to sound money as a yard is to a tailor sure, you have to have, uh, or a you foot have to, is to a carpenter. You have to have a, a, an, unvarying, uh, an unvarying measurement to which you can refer. Right. Yes. The unit of account. The unit of account, exactly. So the problem has been that the peso is a varying unit of account. The ounce is a consistent unit of account. The peso ends up getting debased. Therefore, the silver content of the coin was higher than the peso value on the front of the coin. People would take the silver coins out of value, uh, out of circulation, and use paper money instead. That's exactly what happened. Well, how do we get around that, and how can we put, how can we dress, how can we dress a silver coin in such a way that it can mingle with paper money? Well, we have to give it a number. We have to give it a, a, a numeric value uh, so that you can uh, use the, the, that coin uh, and, and calculate what, you're going, what, you, what, is, what you want to buy. You have to have a number that will refer to it. It's not enough to say it weighs one ounce. You have to say, well, but what is it worth? Mm -hmm. Because people don't think in terms of weight of silver anymore. Mm -hmm. Used to be, they used to say, "Well, that's that's uh, 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 that coin is 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 a quarter of an ounce or a tenth of an ounce." Or uh, people used to think in terms of weight, mm -hmm. and that's why you know peso means weight in Spanish. Why? Because when we made those coins after the Spanish left, we called them peso because they had the same weight as the piece of eight. Oh, I see. But they w didn't have the same uh, f emblems on it, but they weighed the same. That's why we said, so dan el peso, they give the weight. They are of the same weight. That's Very what a peso means. So it's like other coins of the world, the British pound, which is a measure of weight. The old Italian lira was a measure of weight. In the Libra, Middle East, yes. you see dirhams and things like that. They're also measures of weight. That's right. Which goes to show that proper money or sound money is a consistent form of measurement. It is some weight of precious metal. Exactly.